I had it plugged into a covering is reservoirs. I'll break gas all the way to the top. So let's uh, air intake. Hey guys, I'm back after almost two months, two months away from home in Israel uh, with great weather over there. Nice sunny. I'm back in New Jersey where temperatures are <laughs> considerably colder. It's now uh, 36, 35 over here. And the last two, three days, I actually got here two, three days ago, but I've been totally jet lagged. Like it's a seven hour difference from Israel in here. So I was waking up three, four o'clock in the morning. Finally got back to, uh, not really, but finally got back to normal hours. I woke up today, four o'clock in the morning. I said, it's about time. Uh, to tend to the bike a lot of things happened here a lot of things uh, were going on while I was away uh, I'll let you know actually I'll show you exactly right now here he comes <laughs> a lot of things happened here a lot of things uh, were going on while I was away uh, I'll let you know actually I'll show you exactly right now here he comes one big change Hey, Pico! Hello, Pico! Yeah, Pico! Pico is our new dog. Uh, after our uh, other dog passed uh, a few months ago. Hey, Google! So, guys, I just got back from riding. Just very second, I'm still with the gear on. My dog is welcoming me. My dog is welcoming me. Hey, Google! Yeah, hello! Hello there! Hello! Hello there! Anyway, the family was ready for a new addition, and we got this uh, beautiful chihuahua from a shelter. I tell you, from the first first moment he saw me, he was like all over me. I guess he's he's used to the new alpha over here, so he's been sleeping with us uh, in bed at night. Such an adorable little dog. So that is Pico, Pico right there. <laughs> <laughs> Calm down. He's a handful. Seven months old. Uh, we got him like a month ago. My wife and the kids got him from the shelter. Shelter, really cute dog. Really, really cute. Uh, <laughs> Pico. You know, all in all, you know, all in all, I've been blessed. My family, my wife is so tough. So uh, for two months, she was here uh, pretty much alone with the kids and you know, she had, of course, John's, John, you know, John, John's phone number in any case, you know, she needs help or anything, but she never called him. She didn't need his help. Believe it or not, there was like the snowstorm that you've seen uh, somewhere around 12, 14 inches of snow. She plowed it by herself with a shovel. Uh, no need for machines. Really, really tough. Uh, so been blessed and uh, she took care of the family of the house. Everything really, I'm really... You know, we spoke every day over the phone. It was really cool. It was it was tough, two months to be away, but I'm back over here. Yeah, one thing that uh, that changed ever since I got back is uh, one of my kids lost the, the remote for uh, the garage door. So I'll have to get a new one. Right now I'm getting it through the back door to uh, de-winterize, let's put it that way, de-winterize my Harley. Uh, actually, before I left, I wasn't sure how long I'm going to be away for, so I was, uh, I winterized it. Now I'm going to be here for a month, a month and a half, so it's, you know, I'm going to be using it. So now I'm going to be showing you how I de-winterize it and pretty much all the steps I do to de-winterize. I'll also talk about how I actually winterized it. Oh, and before I even uh, start, you know what to do about the subscribe. I'm not going to, not going to yap my mouth about it. Just go ahead. Okay, as you've seen, I've covered it. So step one, of course, uncover the bike. And just before uh, I even started, uh, I had it plugged into a battery tender. Make sure that it actually uh, was working during this whole time. If not, you want to you wanna plug it in and uh, let it uh, tend the battery overnight. What I was looking for before that beautiful green light. Ta-da! 
there it is. Next on covering is my pipe cover. I actually put this uh, part, as part of the winterizing because of all the squirrels, squirrels and uh, chipmunks over here or any animal going into the pipe and building a nest or just hibernating there. So covered it with uh, some cloth, remove that. There you go. And plug that in. There you go, I like that Vance and Hines Pro Pipe. Okay, next step, general uh, inspection of the bike. Look in the bottom, see if you see any oil spills, any liquids on the floor, that's bad news. So let me just check the bike, the bottom, see if there's anything. Looks pretty clean. Okay, that's good news already. No leak down there. Uh, next is all the reservoirs. A uh, brake, uh, brake, fluids, cables, clutch, the reservoir itself. See if there's any uh, leakage, any dampness, any condens, anything. No, it's dry, nice and dry. And the lines are dry. Calipers, caliper area, nice and dry. No leaks down here. Same thing on the other side and in the back and on the clutch side. I'll move the bike out first. Uh, the fob, I don't even remember where I left the key. <laughs> they found it. Let's move the bike, take it out, and continue the inspection. Now, with all this playing around and videotaping, before I continue any further, do I see any moisture? Yeah, I do actually. And that is actually from my back tire. That's uh, some condensation from the tire, I guess, from the moisture or something like that. Other than that, nothing, no oil leaks. Um, of course, I'll uh, check the tire pressure before I ride it. Other than that, let's take it out and continue the inspection. Okay, let's check, uh, let's check the caliper and brake line on the other side. Well, this pretty much looks very completely dry, no leaks. Let's check the clutch reservoir. And that looks also dry, no leaks. Next. Next, uh, let me check all the covers, primary, gearbox. Everything looks pretty dry. Well, you know, the bike was only uh, stored for two and a half, like two, two and a half months. So not much, uh, I don't, not too many surprises here. So let's uh, check the back. Actually, the best way to do it would, would be to take uh, the bags off, but I'm not going to bother. I just generally looking, I can see everything pretty dry over here. Yeah, it looks dry, no leaks. Next would be to take, uh, check of the battery area. Maybe I got a rodent or any, a chipmunk uh, <laughs> inside under the seat. So let's do that. You see, I forgot already, taking it out is from here. that latch, that latch over here. There you go, it's out. Okay, and looks pretty clean. No chipmunks there. 
Let's put it back. It looks good. And then we'll check uh, the fuel, fuel tank. Next, uh, let's check the fuel. Now, what I did before I left uh, to winterize it, uh, look, my daughter is uh, laughing at me over there. She hasn't seen me for two months and so she's laughing at me vlogging again. Uh, what I did when I was uh, winterizing the bike, I before I put it away, I literally drove uh, less than 100 yards away to the gas station, completely filled it up, topped it up, and then I used a fuel stabilizer. Now, some people say, eh, what's the point? See, the point uh, of uh, gas treatment is uh, when you use uh, ethanol uh, mixture, the ethanol itself uh, degrades, degrades uh, very quickly, very fast after a few months. And if you're not getting the best fuel, uh, the fuel starts to break up and becomes uh, gushy and sticky and it can mess up, uh, you know, all around, uh, you know, the, the tank itself, inside the carburetor, the, you know, that whole, anything that has fuel in it, the fuel itself uh, breaks up and creates uh, lots of trouble. So that's why uh, I top it off all the way to the top with that gas uh, treatment. Uh, and that also, wh why, why top it off? They say that if you have a little bit, uh, if you have some of the tank exposed to the air, that can also rust a little bit. That's why you want to top off uh, the gas all the way to the top. So let's check it out, uh, check the gas. Not that I expect to find anything, but Believe it or not, I don't know why it's not topped all the way up. That's strange. Very strange. Anyway, next uh, air intake. I don't expect uh, anything. Uh, just make sure that it's cleared and no animals, no, I don't know, no surprises there. And this looks pretty, pretty uneventful over here. Nothing special. Uh, all fluids, I mean, brake levels and all the dipsticks, uh, transmission and primary, uh, check the levels. I'm not going to do it in this case. The bike has been standing only for two months, so I'm not going to bother for a longer period of time. Definitely recommended. If, uh, if you do actually if you do uh, winterize the bike for a long period of time uh, recommended I didn't do that but uh, they recommend actually spraying you know taking the spark plug out spraying some uh, gas oil mixture I mean so so uh, rust doesn't build up and it's always you know there's a, a oil inside the cylinder itself I didn't do it this time uh, next step would be actually to start it up when everything looks nice and clean i'm going to start it up and let it run uh for a long period of time to get everything warmed up and finally it's going to be to take it for a ride that's why i'm going to wait uh till it, it warms up a little bit and my son is still sleeping so i don't want to start the bike and wake him up okay guys while i wait for my son to wake up uh, I just want to uh, let you know I have two or three different uh, boxes that got here while I was away. Some new installs, I think a windshield, some uh, nut covers, and a wind deflector. Really nice. Going to have those videos, those uh, installs coming up. So if uh, you, know, you want to watch them, go ahead and uh, click that subscribe button. And make sure to hit that bell so you get notifications when those videos drop. So I'm going to wait for my son to wake up and then I'm going to start the bike. I just wonder about the, uh, the level of fuel that is lower than uh, I filled it up. I, I guess that after a few months, uh, it can be expected uh, from, uh, it's not, a, not sealed, not completely uh, airtight. And there is actually breather over there. Uh, so I guess it's a natural evaporation of the, of the gas. So that's why the, uh, the fuel level is a little bit lower. Okay, we're gonna start it up and go for, uh, let it run for 10, 15 minutes and then take it for a ride, a long ride, run through all the gears, get them all oiled up and warm and make sure that everything is functioning properly. Then bring it down here back uh, to rest for our next uh, upgrades.
cold start, two and a half months or two months. running for 15 20 minutes now to take it out for a spin run through all the gears and make sure everything's functioning properly and nicely uh, you know lubricated uh, I was uh, from what I know it's after uh, treating uh, the bike after treating the fuel with uh, the stabilizer it doesn't run as well that's expected but until I get uh, all the fuel out of this tank. One option is uh, actually if if you have the bike sitting for a long, long time, it's actually recommended to pump all the oil. I mean, to pump all the fuel out of the fuel tank and replace it with new fuel. But this fuel is only two months old. I'm gonna use it all the way and then fill up a new tank eventually. Okay, guys, I just came back from a ride. Tr uh, truth be told, I did not take it for a long ride. I did run it through all the gears. I didn't go too fast, but made sure that everything's okay. Uh, like I tell my kids, do as I say, not as I do. Uh, that's the advice. You need to run it uh, through all the speeds, all the gears. Run it for a while, a few miles to get make sure that everything's okay. Everything is working. I didn't go that far. It's too cold for me. But from what I took it, uh, from what I've rode, uh, all gears, all functions, everything is working nicely engine is nice and warm uh, and it's ready for uh, the next month and a half well I'll be riding it reviewing stuff installing and that's it for now guys it's fun to be back hope you're uh, happy I'm here and I'm gonna roll out some nice videos ahead of us thank you all Sandy I'm Sandy from Holy Shift I'm Sandy from Holy Shift peace out yeah.